Have you ever thought about how your job might be affecting your brain? We all know the physical toll work can have on us, but what about the long-term mental impact? Today we're considering the fascinating connection between our jobs and the risk of dementia. You might be surprised because in just a few minutes you'll learn how to help prevent your own cognitive decline. So let's break down how your daily grind could be gradually increasing your risk of developing something like dementia without you even realizing it. So let's start with a quick primer. Dementia isn't just about forgetfulness. It's a progressive condition that affects memory, thinking and reasoning. It affects your ability to carry out everyday activities and can completely change your life. Think of dementia as an umbrella term that houses groups of symptoms caused by brain damage. And Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. But here's the important research we can all benefit from right now. Developing dementia isn't an inevitable result of old age or the genetics lottery. Your job could be a risk factor too. And to be honest, it makes sense. But I'm jumping ahead, so let's get into the specifics. So get this, stress particularly chronic stress, is one of the main things that can increase your risk of developing dementia. And where do we experience a lot of stress? Yep, that place we spend most of our lives, work. Whether it's the never-ending deadlines, the constant pressure, or the emotional demands of your job, it all adds up. A 2018 study found that high job stress substantially increased the risk of Alzheimer's disease in later life. This is because when we're under stress, our body produces a stress hormone called cortisol, which in high levels can damage brain cells, especially those in the hippocampus, the area responsible for memory and learning. Can you believe that? But that's just one part of it. Let me give you the scoop milkshake so you can understand more about how your job could be quietly accelerating the aging of your brain. We've all often felt our workloads are a bit much, but it's about how this affects you mentally. Jobs that demand constant multitasking, decision-making and problem-solving can lead to mental fatigue due to the mental workload. It might sound counterintuitive, but over time, this intense cognitive load can lead to burnout and yes, cognitive decline. Research has shown that employees in high demand, low control jobs, so that's those of you in a managerial position or jobs that require constant troubleshooting, you're more likely to experience mental exhaustion, which can increase your vulnerability to dementia. It's a vicious cycle. The more mentally taxed you are, the more stress you experience and the greater toll on your brain. But it's not just about stress and mental overload. Ever heard the saying, use it or lose it? Now, there's always so much wisdom in these sayings. Yes, if your job is of a sedentary and monotonous nature, say sitting at a desk all day staring at a screen for hours doing repetitive tasks, it could also be contributing to dementia risk. Studies have consistently found that physical activity and monotony are linked to cognitive decline as it restricts blood flow to the brain, reducing oxygen and nutrients necessary for brain function. So if you're stuck behind a desk most of the day or doing some kind of other monotonous work, you're just harming your body. You're also depriving your brain of the vital circulation it needs to thrive. And we all know about how important socializing is for us, right? So this naturally means that social isolation in the workplace can also be a red flag for dementia risk. When you're isolated, either by working remotely or in a job where you don't engage with colleagues much, you miss out on the social interactions that are so necessary for mental well-being. Studies show that those who experience limited social engagement at work have a higher risk of cognitive decline because socializing helps keep the brain active and stimulated. Without these interactions, the brain has fewer opportunities to create new neural pathways and maintain its cognitive functions. Wow, aren't we so lucky to be in the time of information so we can actually do something about these things? Yes, what can you do to protect yourself? 
Well, you can subscribe, that's first. And now let's get to the good news or the better news. It's never too late to make changes. Whether it's changing your job, tweaking your work routine, or improving your work-life balance, there are always ways to reduce the impact work can have on your brain health. Firstly, we spoke about stress. Stress has to be managed. Try adding relaxation techniques like deep breathing, mindfulness, or even a few minutes of meditation into your day. Or do something else that helps you to really relax. Also, take regular breaks. This will give you windows of time to move your body. Get up from your desk and take a walk. A simple 10 minute break every hour can do wonders for your brain. It's also important to socialize at work as much as possible. Engage with colleagues, join work events, or even schedule virtual coffee breaks if you're working from home. We need social contact for well-being. And lastly, if you're stuck in a high-stress job, consider shifting to roles that allow for more control and fewer pressures, or find ways to manage your workload and delegate more effectively. And if you're in a job that's more monotonous and repetitive, then you may need to think of finding work that stimulates your brain, or find ways to mentally stimulate yourself in your spare time. So what's the bottom line here? Your job could be affecting your brain health. From high stress and mental overload to being sedentary and socially isolated, work plays a much bigger role in your cognitive health than you might have thought. I know it may seem like I'm saying you shouldn't work in a job where you think too much and then you shouldn't work in a job where you experience monotony. And that's because as always, it's about the Goldilocks of jobs, the middle ground, moderation. And we can't be in jobs where we abuse it either. We need to be mentally stimulated and engaged. Think of it this way. Although your brain isn't a muscle, it certainly exhibits some muscle-like properties when it comes to neuroplasticity. This refers to how our brains can adapt and change throughout life in response to learning, experiences, and injury. Similar to how muscles can grow and strengthen with exercise, the brain can strengthen or build new connections when challenged with mental exercising, learning new skills, or practicing problem solving. So we can think of the brain like a muscle because just like muscles, it becomes stronger and more efficient with exercise and use, but it can become damaged with under or overuse. Now, if you found this video mind blowing, do give it a like and share it with anyone you think might benefit from knowing how their job is impacting their brain health. Basically, anyone you know and care about. And subscribe because we'll serve you the latest research in digestible ways so you can stay healthy, stay aware, and take care of your mind. It's the most valuable thing you own, after all.